Hey everyone, welcome into EVH2. I'm Warren Seegers and this is our project. There's two things I'm going to fix on this cabinet. One, we bought the medicine cabinet at a reduced price because the crown molding had come off the top of it. Two, the cabinet's back is nothing more than compressed cardboard, a paper product, and a high moisture room. After a few years of hanging, the cardboard back gave in and moisture won. So I'm going to replace the cardboard back with a wood back. Here's a look at my tool list. You'll need a Phillips head and flathead screwdriver, T-square, carpenter's pencil, paintbrush, and clean rags. The material list is short, one quarter inch finished plywood and drywall screws. Step one, remove the cabinet. This is almost the hardest step and that should give you an idea. This project is simple. Step two, take the cardboard back off the cabinet. Step three, remove any remaining fasteners that were holding the cardboard back to the cabinet. The most popular fastener used in this quality of cabinets is staples, and staples can be removed best with a flathead screwdriver. Step four, take your measurements, getting the length and width of the cabinet back. If part or all your cabinet back is inset, take inside measurements. You will know if you have an inset cabinet back by looking at the sideboards. If the sides have an inner routed edge, it is inset. If the cabinet back laid on top the sideboards, you do not have an inset back. In this case, you will take outer measurements. My cabinet back had both measurement types. Outer measurements for the length and inner for the width. Step 5. Transfer your measurements to the quarter inch plywood using a T-square to make sure your lines are straight. After making your lines, use a skill saw to cut your plywood. Once you have cut your new cabinet back, place it into your cabinet to make sure your cuts and measurements are good. If everything fits snug, you're ready to move on. Step 6. This part is optional and depends on your own style preference. You can paint, stain, or just leave the natural wood look to show inside the cabinet. I chose to apply a coat of stain to bring out the wood grain. If you choose to paint or stain, follow the manufacturer's recommended drying time before continuing. Step 7. Fastening the new back to the cabinet. I simply use drywall screws. Even though I did not pre-drill my holes, I do recommend you do so. This cabinet isn't cheap. It is made of particle board, which is known for chipping without pre-drilling. Step 8. Step back and admire your work. Then remount it to the wall and restock it. The fix for the crown molding, I pulled the staples and then used wood glue to secure it. For more tool tips and project ideas like this, be sure to stop by our website at edificeventure.com. Like us on Facebook and subscribe to our YouTube channel.